Welcome to WP Theme Tutorial, episode 55. Today is going to be another look at WooCommerce. So for the book I wrote, I needed to, or I wanted to include videos with it as well. And I did, but downloading all the videos at what I think is a decent, decent quality for what most people have as fairly large monitors was like a six gig file. It's a lot of download, that's a lot of expense. And it's just going to take a long time for many, many people. No, even for me, on a reasonably fast connection at 25 megabits, it's going to take a few hours to get down. So what I wanted to do was actually host it. But I only wanted to give you access if you had purchased the product, because that's you know it's part of the product. You purchased it or purchased access to the videos. You can see here on the live site that I've got the videos showing. There's an interviews menu, and here's all my videos. Now this actually took a few steps. Uh, when I looked through the WooCommerce plugins, there was ones for membership sites to restrict content based on that, but not one where I could just say, you know, product A, if you've purchased product A, you get access to this page. So I had to roll my own. I'll go over to the development site and we'll start walking through some of this right now. One of the first things I did, you can see here, this is right on the development site, is I have a template restricted. So let's open that up. And the important part is right here on line 37. I'm actually authorizing it two ways. It says if current user can activate plugins. So that's basically an admin or a super admin, I suppose, in this uh, on my network. Or, and here's my other, here's the cool function is WooCommerce customer bot product. And that takes three things. It takes the email of the user, the current user ID or the user ID, and the product ID. So here, you can see we start by getting the current user using WP get current user. The next thing we do is get the email out of that, and we pass it all in. So if the current user can activate plugins, or which is what the double pipe means, they've bought the product of ID 4388, they get the content. And then I just embedded the video right on the page, uh, right under the Vimeo links, and in Vimeo they're only authorized to play on my domain. Else, I echoed out, so if it, they haven't bought those things, or they aren't the administrator, they get to access the interviews, you must, and the link to the product purchase the book. So they can still see the page, but they don't get any content. Now that's great on the page we restricted, but also needed to do a few other things, like the menu. So you can see here, I've actually added in my functions a content menu so that I have a second menu. And then in my header, and I'll look for 4388. Right underneath the rest of the menu, I just added another one. I did the same thing. If current user can activate plugins or they purchase the product, Here's our new menu. And that means from the admin, if we go to menus, I actually have two menus. And in my second menu, all I did was add my interviews page. So that means on the site, if you don't have or if you aren't the administrator, or you haven't purchased the product, you're not even going to see this interviews menu right here. It won't even show up. Now the final hurdle I had was actually to do with the email. How do I let someone know that the interviews aren't downloadable because they're so huge, but where they can get them? Well, if we actually jump into WooCommerce, emails, and my template, so this is the email template for a completed order. So once the order has been approved, sent out, I suppose, if you're dealing with physical goods, or uh, in this case, since it's a digital product, as soon as the payment's approved, automatically completing the order. I only have one product, so you can look at line 16, and all I said was the downloadable videos are also available on the site. In fact, I should change this, because the downloadable vid videos are only available on the site. You can access them at, and I give the link to them, or from the menu on the site. That's it. This works because I only have one product at this point. This is not something that I can do all the time. 
because I need to make sure that uh, in the future if I have other products, this might be a different link. There might be just different other content. So that's actually a plugin that I'm going to probably look at building. Uh, if you have product A, then you get access to this custom content, right? If you have product B, you could have access to different custom content. That's something that I'm going to look at building. But basically that's how you do it. You use the one function in WooCommerce to tell if the user bought a product by giving it the email, the user ID, and then the product uh, ID. And that's it. And then you can, if that is true, you can show them content or not. Thanks for watching.